I had a cold today, nothing really serious, but I just didn't feel like working outside. So today we're gonna work on the crossover circuits. And all we're gonna do is extend the length of these wires because the cabinets are a little bit deeper. And when I place this towards the back of the cabinet near the terminal cup, they won't reach up to where I'm putting the tweeter and the woofers. So I'm going to extend it with these wires and we will seal it nice and tight with uh, this, um, I don't even know what you call it, but what happens is when you put heat on it, it uh, shrinks down to be really tight and it becomes like another skin. And here's the heat gun that we'll use. So hopefully this works. I'll be able to place these anywhere I want inside the cabinet and it will be able to reach all the drivers. So I wanted to show you what it looks like once the shrink wrap or the, the sleeve has been shrunk down. You can see this is where the, the splice is and uh, it, this is like a second skin. What I'm gonna do now on camera is I'm gonna run the heat gun and you can watch the shrink wrap happen live. It's kind of fun watching. It's kind of actually fun doing. And that is done. It's a little colder today, so I've got the garage door closed. I think that's enough light to see what's going on. That is the crossover circuit, and I've got it mounted right in the middle on the bottom, and it's very sturdy. It's not moving anywhere. The screws, uh, the, the front ones are easy access with a uh, screwdriver. The ones in the back are a little bit harder to get to, but I've got them going in at an angle so you can get at it with a power screwdriver. If for whatever reason you ever need to replace it, you just remove the front woofer and you'll have access to that area. But if you listen to the speakers within the specs, these should run forever. The speaker wire going out back there is uh, set up so that it can connect up to the terminal cup. And of course we added all this excess length, extra length I should say, not excess, it's needed. Because now we could route up over that brace and connect up to the tweeter. I added a little more than I needed, quite a bit more than I needed on the uh, woofer side, but that's okay. I'll probably just uh, lay that off to the side and, and tape it down. Next up, we have to add the dampening material and then get the, the front baffles um, drilled out or routed out, and then we'll be able to load this all up and get it done. All right, so I got everything cut out with the um, with the router, and that's what that looks like. It's I eyeballed it. I can I can move it, and so I can make sure that I get it perfectly centered. And uh, so that's this is what it looks like when it's uh, cut out. I had to cut these notches because on the beak on the tweeter. Let me pull it out. You can see. The tweeter, that's where the uh, terminals are. And I went, put it right in like that. And I kind of left this in. I could have just cut it or tried to be a little bit uh, uh, more precise with a cut, but with my jigsaw, I couldn't get that precise. So I ended up just kind of starting at the middle and moving up, leaving a little extra in there for support. I don't know if it's necessary. It won't make any difference in the audio. So that's it. And then, let's see if I can lift this up one-handed. I put in the, what is it, polyfill to help dampen any waves, sound waves bouncing off the back and the front. And I will glue it up and we will have a speaker. That's what it's gonna look like.
So I really like it. It's going to look pretty cool, and I think it's going to sound pretty cool. I already did a test on the audio to make sure that all the components work, and they sound great, and they will sound a lot better when it's perfectly sealed. As you can see, there's a lot of clamps used to get this thing all nice and tight. You can see some glue over there. I get I scrape that off before I do any sanding. And then also I fill the gaps or the holes with tape so that none of the sawdust goes in there when I get the sanding going. That's what it looks like. I have a little scraper that I go through and get all the glue off. And then it makes sanding a little bit easier. You don't waste time sanding off glue. So once that's done, I'll round over the edges and get it loaded up with the drivers. And these things will be making music in a little bit. All right, so we got it all kind of nice and flush. Still needs a little more sanding, but at this point, I'm gonna round over the edges with my router. And I like that look a lot better than just the uh, sharp 90 degree angles here. And of course, it does kind of hide some of my little flaws there. So that one will disappear with the rounding over. And then we will do a sanding up to a thousand grit. We'll oil it and load in the components. All right, so they're rounded over and I will sand this so it's nice and straight and then we'll get rid of the burn marks. So it's possible that my blade or the uh, bit is a little bit dull, so I might have to pick up a new one and that'll all sand out really nice and easy and that will take a little bit of a while. And usually when I get done, my hands are vibrating because of how much time I'm putting on the sander. As I said, we're gonna go all the way up to a thousand grit but from 400 to 1,000, we are gonna go by hand. All right, so it's all sanded, and uh, it's hard to tell in the picture, but it is smooth as glass. Now I'm going to put some oil on here, my favorite part. I'm just gonna show the top. And you can see how the, um, the, the wood changes. I'm just using an old sock to rub that in. You can see how it gets nice and rich, the color. So let's see if I can show you, there's the contrast of the unoiled and the oiled. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two coats. So I'll let this sink sit in there for a few minutes. I'll wipe it down, I'll do it again. And then when it dries after a couple of days, I'll put a coat of furniture wax on there and that will be good. Probably it doesn't get much uh, use, you know, like, um, like a cutting board or something, not that you'd use this oil on a cutting board, but um, it should just last like that forever. It would, all you'd have to do is dust it with like pledge or something like that. Very easy to take care of. The speakers are complete. I've got them temporarily placed here in my media room. This is not where I am gonna keep these or I wouldn't even recommend putting them here permanent, permanently. It's just for display. We're gonna demo some music here in a bit, but I just wanted to take a look at it. They look, I think, fantastic. Let's take a look here at the top. This cherry looks incredible. Take a look at the backside here in a second. This is the... Uh, speaker that I let the router get away from me. That's what it ended up looking like. That is not a gap. That is just uh, filled in with some um, glue that is black. And that's why it looks like that, but it's perfectly sealed. I'll show you the other one here in a second. Let's see if I can turn it around live. That's what that one looks like. That wood grain looks incredible. So now we're gonna demo it. And uh, I, again, as I always say, the microphone on this telephone, on this um, iPhone that I'm using to record it is not the best. By the way, I am using the SVS SoundBase Pro. It's a really powerful amp and you can see how small it is. Right behind it is the Emotiva amp. And this one is only two channels, the Emotiva is seven but uh, this thing has as much power, if not more power than that Emotiva, at least for two channels. And it would definitely drive my kefs. Excuse the room, I had to modify it to get <laughs> things placed here. All right, let's get the demo.
The speakers sound incredible. These are, as I said, JBL LX22s. The, the components were made in America and uh, I think built in the 80s. So I took them out and I reclaimed them and I built my own cabinet. The cabinet is a little bit deeper than what the LX22 was. I will put a picture here and you can see what it looked like. And it's a little bit shorter. I didn't make it as tall as the LX22. I think maybe I took off a half an inch and the width is the same as the uh, stock LX22. So it's a good size speaker. It really fills the room. You couldn't really hear it that well in the recording, but trust me, this room got a lot of volume. And uh, so that's it. It's a lot of fun building these things. If you have any questions, send me an email, ara at HT guys, and I'll be more than happy to talk about what I did. And if you've got any questions just on speaker building in general, let me know. Also, these are available, at least at the time of this recording here. Uh, send me an email if you're interested in buying them. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like and subscribe. And there is more that we have on my podcast that I do with my co-host Braden Russell. And that's at htguys.com. Thank you so much for watching.